Good day, everyone. My name is Vince Kamen, the pulmonology nurse navigator for Mercy Health's Illinois locations. A little bit about myself. I, uh, I've been with the health system for 20, over 20 years now, and I am their pulmonary nurse navigator, a nurse by trade. I also am board certified in ambulatory care nursing and also certified as a tobacco treatment specialist through Mayo Clinic. So the uh, topic of today is the adverse effects of smoking and vaping, and uh, we'll go on ahead and get started. So the learning objectives for this uh, uh, seminar is to understand the neurobiology of nicotine dependency, understand the dangers of tobacco use, understand the dangers of vaping, understand the health benefits of cessation, and then understand the treatment options available for those who are desiring to quit. Uh, to uh, note, I have no conflict of interest in this presentation, so we'll go on ahead and get started with the neurobiology of nicotine dependency. As you can see here, it focuses mainly on the core pleasure ex uh, um, centers of the brain. This is the limbic system, and uh, we really want to conceptualize this as an addiction. So we want to look at this as a disease of the brain reward centers. A, the addictive drug, in this case the nicotine, hijacks the brain circuits that promote survival and influence rational thought. Now the release of neurotransmitters then reinforce the effects of the nicotine in the brain's core or that reward center. Now, these are the seven different neurotransmitters that are released when that nicotine molecule hits the, uh, hits the nicotine receptor in this area. Dopamine, the pleasure hormone, also appetite suppression. Norepinephrine, arousal, appetite suppression. Acetylcholine, again, arousal, cognitive, cognitive enhancement. Uh, glutamine, the learning memory enhancement. Serotonin, which is from mood modulation, putting us into a better mood, appetite suppression, beta endorphins. Again, this is the reduction of anxiety, tension, and GABA and reduction of the anxiety and tension. So you can kind of see how um, all of these different neurotransmitters being released at one time uh, can really facilitate dependency because we're also going to get into, you know, why we, you know, how we withdraw from this, which is in our uh, a couple slides from now. So nicotine effects we want to talk about addiction and this is going to be the compulsive drug used characterized um, by drug use securing supply and then relapse after withdrawal drug tolerance is going to be the decreased responsiveness to uh, the drugs pharmacologic or the the, the effects um, a effect after exposure so tolerance may result as apart from increase uh, uh, nicotinic receptors and then you're going to need more of that uh, exposure to get the same effect, if you will. Now, the physical dependence comes after the drug exposure, the presence of that drug that's required for normal function. And that's meaning that, you know, without that drug, you're gonna have withdrawals and that's gonna impair normal function. So you use the, you know, we become dependent on that drug to be able to function normally. Um, Signs and symptoms of nicotine withdrawal will usually begin as soon as 90 minutes after the last dose. And those side effects that you're gonna feel are a low heart rate known as bradycardia, cravings, irritability, anxiety, restlessness, difficulty concentrating, drowsiness, headaches, increased appetite, and insomnia. Very, very real. This slide here just shows an anticipated reward not delivered. Uh, chronic drug ex um, exposure depletes dopamine. This all leads into a dopamine hypoactivity. And then, of course, that's going to give you those, uh, those drug cravings to hopefully get that back up into the uh, um, range where you feel like you're functioning normally. So what happens if you fight the cravings? Well what will happen is that the brain will recover on its own by naturally raising those levels. It typically takes about five to 10 minutes. So as you fight through those cravings, those cravings get less and less. The body rebuilds those levels naturally. The craving goes away. Now, as you resist these cravings, the nicotine receptors will go in to a dormant state and then just 
go to sleep, if you will. Now, it's important to know this because uh, um, they don't exactly die off. You always have them. So this is going to be especially important for when you want to achieve and maintain that freedom from nicotine because these can wake up, uh, you know, at, at any time throughout your life. So you just kind of got to know that as you write, as you, uh, as you fight these cravings, they are going to become easier and then it'll lead to cessation. So very important. Let's take a moment to talk about cigarettes, okay? Now tobacco smoke we know is a complex mixture of uh, chemicals, uh, 256 known harmful chemicals and about 69 known carcinogens, okay? Nearly six million deaths occur annually worldwide from tobacco use. Cigarette smoking is responsible for one in five deaths in the USA and this is uh, just this is greater than uh, about 450,000 deaths per year so very very significant um, more than 16 million Americans live with a smoking related disease again very pre um, very prevalent and then from the good news is though is that from 1965 when the first uh, uh, US Surgeon General put out the report up until you know just two years ago we have seen a significant significant decline in the uh, um, rate of adult smoking, which was 41% down to 14. So we still have a lot of work to do though. We got 14, 14% is still too much. I want to call to intention a new product that's been brought out. FDA has approved this, and I just want to educate all of you on uh, you know what this is all about. It's ICOS. It's um, it's an emerging product put out by Philip Morris, and the FDA permitted the sale of this. Um, and it's called I Quit Ordinary Smoking. It's Philip Morris's electronically heated tobacco system. And of course, they're gonna, they're gonna try and spin this that it's a healthier option. And their claim is that because it heats the tobacco and does not burn it, uh, the amount of chemical exposure is going to be uh, greatly reduced, making it uh, making it safer. But the bottom line is that it's still giving a chemical exposure. So um, really, there's no safe way to smoke. So you're still going to be putting yourself in jeopardy um, because there still is a uh, uh, a chemical exposure. And you know, like I said, it's. Uh, um, whether it's a small amount or a medium amount or a large amount, in time it could still have negative consequences on the body. This is just a couple examples of the uh, tobacco smoke uh, um, constitutes. We have uh, arsenic, benzene, uh, benzoyprinine, the cadmium, which is found in batteries, chromium, uh, cresol, formaldehyde, lead, nitrosamines, phenol, polonium-210. Two, yes, it, it is a radioactive substance. <laughs> and uh, we've got uh, uh, you know vinyl and then the, uh, the hydrocarbons as well, too. So this just kind of puts it into perspective right here a really great picture just kind of shows you everything that we talked about and uh, you know the common um, uh, common uh, other products that are used that have these same chemicals in them so uh, you know just to kind of put it into a visual perspective there a lot of chemicals that are just harmful on the body uh, tobacco use in specific diseases it's well known that it's uh, causes uh, it's been linked to uh, uh, several uh, pretty much uh, most of the cancers out there are linked to uh, cigarettes and uh, tobacco use chronic obstructive pulmonary disease uh, uh, cardiovascular diseases um, and then uh, uh, you know also has a um, uh, strokes uh, is another one uh, other diseases like a uh, aneurysms uh, dementia dementia and macular degeneration. Complications, especially me medical, we talked about the cancer. Cancers are linked um, to it, and it makes up 40% of all the cancers diagnosed in the uh, United States according to the CDC. The risk of cancer death is two times higher in smokers and four times higher in heavy smokers. So that's going to be around your two pack per day uh, individuals. Smoking um, casually. Uh, is linked to cancers of the uh, uh, the lung, the larynx, oral cavity, esophagus, pancreas, bladder, kidney, stomach, 
uh, you, you got uterine, cervix, and uh, other types of myeloid. And then they have uh, uh, acute myeloid leukemia as well. Uh, lung cancer is the main one, of course, leading cause of cancer death in men and women in the U.S. About 15% of smokers will develop lung cancer. Uh, a smoking causes 90% of all of the uh, can lung cancers and increases the risk for all four of the major uh, the cell types. Lung cancer causes more death than prostate, breast, colon, and pancreatic cancers combined. So uh, cigar and pipe smoking associated with increased risk, that's mainly because uh, no filters. So um, you're, getting, you're getting more of those harmful chemicals not having the filter in there. The uh, five-year survival rate for non-small cell uh, lung cancer is about 15%. It's obviously um, uh, varies with uh, race and gender. So, um, and then of course, we're gonna greatly reduce that risk uh, with smoking cessation and stopping smoking. Now, Mercy Health's Lung Cancer Screening Program, just want to touch on this briefly because uh, what we have here is for patients who meet the following criteria, that's ages 55 to 77, uh, have to be a current smoker or have quit within 15 years, have no signs and symptoms of active lung cancer, and have a 30-pack year history of smoking. That's, does, that, we figure that out by one pack per day times one year is one pack year. Uh, you know, if you meet these criteria, you would definitely want to talk to your health care provider about getting uh, you know, the annual screening and get, being a part of that screening program. We realize that by doing this, we're going to be able to identify, or, you know, identify nodules, which are those lesions that can develop. And uh, you know, if we do find them, we categorize them, we track them, and we follow up on them accordingly. Now, it's important to note at the bottom of the slide here that the U.S. Preventative Task Force is currently working on expanding the criteria for screening. They're actually, uh, right now, they're working on passing legislation that'll lower it to age 50 and to as high as 80, and then they're looking at uh, um, stating instead of 15 years smoke-free, 20 years smoke-free, and then dropping the pack year to just 20 pack years. So uh, definitely, I'm sure that that'll be, uh, uh, when that gets passed, the, uh, your healthcare provider will be able to make that determination too. So if you qualify. Program's purpose, we kind of already touched base on that. It's just to uh, track a you know, find those nodules, track them, and, uh, you know, again, the whole point of the program is to, you know, provide a means of early detection and intervention because that provides the greatest chance of clinical outcomes, which is so important. Just kind of want to take a brief moment here. This is a, uh, this is an x-ray that you would see and kind of see that little white spot right down there. That is a, uh, that is a nodule or mass on what it's seen on it x-ray. Then over here we have the CT scan and you can see it in much larger detail here. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a nodular mass and uh, just to kind of show you this is some of the imaging that we see with uh, and complications of, of smoking here. And then uh, now let's talk a bit about uh, chronic obstructive lung disease. This year it became the third leading cause of death. Over 5% of the U.S. adult population have COPD. It accounts for greater than 80,000 deaths per year. And over 80% of COPD is due to smoking. Pipe and cigar smoking has shown decreased uh, lung function and increased airway obstruction. So again, for those uh, non-filtered symptoms, systems, uh, you know, you're putting yourself at a higher risk there. Um, the pathology of a COPD, these uh, emphysema, uh, basically emphysema is lung destruction here. You can kind of see this, uh, this pattern of destruction right here. Uh, it's, it's very white. This is very calcified, very heavy there. And uh, this is a, uh, you know, this is an air, air sac that just isn't really going to, um, you know, function much, which is, uh, uh, which is, in, and this is a permanent damage. So uh, there's really not much that we can, uh, uh, it's complete destruction of the, uh, the bronchioles there. And uh, just to kind of put it into perspective, you know, this is, this is what's happening with the, uh, when, when you, uh, when you smoke. Uh, again, this is, uh, you know, well, 
a normal healthy lung and then of course this is a uh, diseased lung uh, both with cancer and emphysema so just kind of put it into a perspective there of the the amount of damage that can be done so um, again, this is kind of taking a look at airways. Normal airway, you can see that it's nice and open. Mucus plugging, which uh, you know, tobacco users, uh, even vaping users too, and we'll get into that, may run into some issues here. Uh, again, inflamed airway. Again, it's a, uh, you know, these are toxic chemicals and uh, they'll inflame the airway. And then of course you can kind of see um, you know, the restrictions of the lumen, you can see how tight that airway gets and how people can really have difficult, uh, difficult times breathing when, uh, uh, when, their, when their disease gets, um, uh, uh, you know, into the advanced stages here. Let's talk a bit about coronary artery disease. Again, the leading cause of death in the United States, most decline. Uh, most of the decline is in incidence because of the lower smoking rate. So we have been seeing a positive correlation. Or, uh, yeah, as, as we go down in the smoking, we've seen a decrease in uh, a lot of uh, coronary artery disease-related illness because of that drop. So we have about 100,000 uh, CAD deaths due to smoking, and this is uh, uh, about thir over 35 percent of them are before the age of 65. So we're seeing a lot of younger people out there, uh, you know, needing to come to the cath lab or, you know, needing to get work cardiac workups because of uh, premature coronary artery disease. And that can all be contributed to, to smoking. Uh, you're about two to six times higher risk of sudden cardiac death. So, and then of course we, uh, because of this, you know, we're, we, we see about uh, over 1.6 million coronary procedures a year. Again, um, as we talk about it is that we mentioned again the leading cause of death. Cigarette smokers are two to four times more likely to develop coronary heart disease than a non-smoker. And smokers are 10 times as likely to v develop peripheral vascular disease, which can cause other uh, you know, issues as well. Um, again, we kind of talk about you're putting yourself at a higher risk for blood clots, uh, increased myocardial work. The harder your heart has to uh, work to get the oxygenated blood to your body because of the carbon monoxide effects that binds to the hemoglobin way faster than oxygen. So you're going to start starving, starving your tissues of oxygen. Catecholamine releases vasoconstrictions where they get really, really narrow. And then, of course, it can lead to the atherosclerosis, the hardening of the arteries by the formation of lipids. The lining of those arteries and veins don't work as well. The oxidant injury, of course, the blood clots, and then of, of the, the ability for your blood to you know, freely move in, in your vascular system um, is all compromised there. Normal one, and then here's a diseased, just to uh, kind of put it into perspective there, give a good visual demonstration of the, uh, you know, the really big adverse effects of the, the vessels there. Let's talk about vaping now, because this is uh, brand, you know, new to the market. I believe it uh, surfaced in 2013, and uh, you know, it was, it was uh, I mean, it was marketed as a safe alternative, harmless water vapor. You know, not true, my friends, not true. Let's talk about this here. This is a great picture because just like the cigarette slide earlier, this is kind of showing you those, uh, you know, the, the, the chemicals and the, you know, the other products that we see here, propylene glycol, theater fog, lead, acetaldehyde, formaldehyde, tutelene, which is a um, commonly used in paint thinner, cadmium and batteries, acetone, that's a nail polish remover, uh, acrolein, a main component in weed killer, and we'll we'll get into this in a, in a few slides here, but. These e-cigarettes, they come in many shapes and sizes. There's definitely, uh, you know, different um, uh, um, different products out there. Most of them will have a battery, a heating element, and a place to hold the liquid or the e-juice, if you will. These produce an aerosol by heating that liquid, and then that liquid usually contains nicotine, and that's the addictive part of it, flavorings and other chemicals that help make up this aerosol, okay? Um, they're known by many different names, e-cigs, e-hookahs, mods, vape pens, vapes, tank systems. The medical community will usually refer 
refer to them as ENDS, or electronic nicotine delivery systems. E-cigarettes can also be used to deliver marijuana in the form of CBD oil as well. So again, just some pictures of the different generational devices here. Uh, the Juul, which is very popular among the youth right now. Um, this has got a, uh, you know, a pretty big share of the market. Uh, they're small, they're discreet, they look like USB drives so they can be easily concealed and uh, they don't really emanate a lot of smoke. Um, so it, they can often, uh, um, you know, be used discreetly too. So these are examples of the juices. Um, there are several, several different e-juices out there. Um, if all of them, uh, you know, a, a vast majority of them do, do contain nicotine. But then it's the flavorings that I'm going to talk to you about in a little bit here that are, the dan that are part of the danger here. And then, of course, too, you know, we are, you know, they say they're not marketing to children, but... I remember these breakfast cereals as a kid. So, uh, you know, just to kind of, and then of course the popular candies down here. So, uh, you know, just, you know, parents, if you, you know, just be, be mindful of this. The impact so far. So as of February 18, 2020, a total of two, uh, uh, 2,807 hospitalized E-Valley. And, and what that means is uh, electron, um, the uh, uh, electronic sim uh, electronic uh, uh, cigarette associated lung injury uh, cases have been uh, reported to the CDC from all 50 states, including Puerto Rico, views Virgin Islands. We've had 68 deaths that have been confirmed in 29 of the states, and the youngest reported was in uh, Texas at 15 years old. So right off the bat, you know, it took us a little while to kind of figure it out with cigarettes. We're really getting a uh, you know a good uh, you know, a good handle on this and really taking a, you know, taking a, um, you know, a, a stance here early, which I think is going to, you know, help a, help a lot of people out. It is the most commonly uh, used tobacco, uh, tobacco or tobacco related product among youth. Um, in 2019, over 5 million high school and middle-aged students used e-cigarettes within the past 30 days. 10.5% uh, of them were middle school, 89.5 were high school students 2017. 2 2.8 of the uh, uh, American adults uh, were, were current e-cigarette users. 2015 among adult e-cigarette users, and this is overall 58.8 were also um, uh, current regular cigarette smokers. Uh, just thir almost 30% were former regular cigarette smokers, and 11.4% had never been regular cigarette smokers. So, you know, that's really, really concerning because a majority of the adults out there who are vaping are dual users. So they're getting the, the worst from both of them, if you will. And so... E-juices. There are some issues with these. There's been little regulation up until recently on how it's manufactured. It's difficult to know what chemicals and nicotine concentrations are in e-juice because, um, you know, and, and what's even more scary is that what they're claiming is nicotine-free. Studies have shown that uh, uh, when they did test them in laboratories that even, uh, you know, trace amounts of nicotine were still found within the nicotine-free. So full ingredient lists are typically not available. Even legally obtained e-juices purchased from licensed vendors have uh, been known to be found harmful. And then I want to kind of point out a study by Kim and, 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 and their group in 2013 found tobacco-related nitrosamines. Now, that's the cancer-causing substances in tobacco. They found these same substances in 105 of the e-cigarette replacement liquids that they tested. So again, just uh, putting the word out there, you know, so you have knowledge to make an informed decision on uh, that, that, you know, it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's kind of scary. So be mindful of that. Two primary ingredients are propylene glycol and vegetable glycerin. These are the bases of the e-juices. Now, when these two chemicals are heated, they form acetaldehyde, which is a um, acrolein, and formaldehyde. These three chemicals are well known to cause uh, lung, lung disease, cancers, and heart disease. So, and as the, the, the more you heat them up, and 
and we know we're heating them up because they're getting good uh, um, they're getting uh, you know those big smoke stacks because the more you heat it the more the more you get and uh, you know unfortunately this is kind of like the uh, uh, you know what we see here when we're heating and then applying oxygen uh, that's how that's breaking down there so very real. We know too, this uh, slide will show you that as we heat up, battery out, out, vo output voltage, as that goes up, our, uh, our uh, formaldehyde, acetaldehyde, those, those uh, rise as well. So, um, e-juice flavoring. Several flavoring additives are used to the liquid. Not enough time has passed to obtain longitudinal data, so the uh, of risk of infl of these inhalings. I know that uh, you know they're safe to consume, but inhaling, uh, that's that's a different that's a different uh, um, it's a different beast here. I got a few of them here up just for example, dicetyl. This is a buttering flavor. Uh, the butter flavor is known to cause alveolar damage or popcorn lung. Um, the uh, cinnamon aldehyde, which is the cinnamon flavor, known to impair uh, mucus removal from the lungs. Uh, vanillin, which is vanilla, is linked to cell death and impairing the functionality of the blood vessels. Again, this is a picture of popcorn lung. You can see where the damage to the uh, bronchial uh, trees have happened there. E-cigarette dangers, of course, the heat will break down the components of the device itself. We have found that uh, in secondhand smoke and even the primary uh, smoke of the vaping, these fine particles, nickel, lead, tin, and cadmium. The danger of vaping C, uh, THC and CBD oil. A majority of the Valley cases of Val, uh, you know, that, that these people have been hospitalized have uh, been using the THC uh, containing products. These oils have been linked to the development of lipoid pneumonia based on clinical presentations and the way that we see the lipic, lipids in the uh, bronchiovelar uh, washings that we do. So, um, Symptoms are going to be coughness and sh coughing and shortness of breath, fever, pleuritic chest pain, uh, blood, kind of a bloody, bloody spit, if you will, hemoptysis, headache, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain and diarrhea, tachycardia, which is again your fast heart rate, and then increased blood pressure, feeling unusually tired and, and uh, a non-healthy weight loss. As you can see here, these are bilateral um, opacities on a chest x-ray. Normal x-rays, you should see just a nice, uh, you're black, but this is kind of whited out. You can kind of see here, it looks like a ground glass appearance. And uh, then we've got some uh, opacities here that are much more concentrated, like those nodules that we found. Again, this is what we'll see on a chest x-ray. You can kind of see that all the fields here are pretty whited out. Um, and this, of course, uh, you know, with all of this uh, going on here, uh, you're not, not getting good oxygenation here. So I um, want to talk briefly about the, uh, develop the nicotine effect on the developing adolescent brain. The brain continues to develop to, um, through the early to the mid-20s. Because the adolescent brain is still developing, nicotine use during this critical period can disrupt the formation of brain circuits that control attention, learning, and susceptibility to addiction. Young people are uniquely at risk for long-term effects of exposing their developing brains uh, to nicotine, including mood, mood disorders and uh, permanent lowering of impulse control. Uh, nicotine activates the limbic system, and it's more strongly in the adolescent less in brain than an adult, so making the addiction at a greater, it just makes the addiction much, uh, uh, it puts them at a greater risk, uh, bottom line, for, for those uh, who are using nicotine. Continuing on, tobacco and vaping should be considered one and the same. And, uh, you know, they both have immediate, short-term, and adverse effects on the body, as well as an increased risk of chronic conditions and cancer. Uh, both cause varying degrees of damage in the lining of the lungs and damage to the cilia. Now, this incapacitates the lungs' natural ability to trap and clear particles inhaled into the lungs, putting the user at an increased risk of both bacteria 
bacterial and viral respiratory diseases. And this is huge because of COVID-19 right now. I mean, we're in the, uh, we're, we're in, we're right, right now we've got a global pandemic that is attacking the lungs. So I really want to encourage those users out there to take this into consideration and make it your time to quit. Cause you really don't want to increase your risk of, uh, you know, um, catching this and, and you really don't want to increase the risk of getting, you know, hurt because of it, uh, you know, and, uh, we just want to do that. So again, you know, a lot of the uh, organizations out there, especially the American Cancer Society, the American Lung Association, really want us to start thinking about tobacco and vaping as being one and the same. And right, and they should be because they they both are causing problems. So let's talk about freedom from nicotine. It is achievable. Again, just going back to that earlier slide where we went down from, you know, as much as I mean, we've seen a decline, just 14%. So we want to make sure that we, uh, you know, do everything we can to make that, uh, make that number way better. Mercy Health is here to help. You definitely want to talk to your healthcare provider and start to talk. Just start to talk. Obtaining a referral to talk with a certified tobacco treatment specialist. We are here to help as well. We complement and, uh, you know, we work with you and your ordering provider, your primary care um, provider to, you know, give you the, uh, uh, you know, the best, uh, best chance for outcome here. Uh, also, several other resources I want to talk about. There's the Illinois Quit Line, 866-QUIT-YES, the American Lung Association, the American Cancer Society, the American Heart Association, all have wonderful resources to help you quit. Benefits of quitting, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, your heart rate and your blood pressure are going to return to normal. Within 12 hours, your carbon monoxide level is going to drop to normal. Smokers are about 10 times higher in their carbon monoxide levels than, than you know, uh, non-smokers. So that's huge. Within two to three months, two, two weeks to three months, your heart, atta your heart attack risk begins to drop. Your lung function begins to improve. One to nine months, your coughing and your shortness of breath are going to decrease. The lining of your lungs is going to repair itself. Those cilia, those hair-like structures are going to regrow and you know you're going to be able to cough um, clear secretions easier, you're going to be able to tolerate activity um, uh, tolerate activity better. One year um, your added risk of coronary heart disease is half that of smokers so you're going to cut your risk in half in one year. Five years your risk for stroke is reduced um, of that of a, of a, of a non-smoker. Um, and then 10 years, your lung, lung cancer uh, death rate is about half that of a smoker. Your risk for cancers of the mouth, throat, esophagus, bladder, kidney, and pancreas decrease. And after 15 years, your risk of, uh, your risk of coronary heart disease is back to that of non-smokers. So you can see the benefits of quitting, and it's uh, really great. Other things to mention here that weren't mentioned in the slide that I'll touch on briefly. Your sense of taste, your sense of smell are going to be better. Your medications are going to be working better. It's just going to all around be, uh, you know, a positive improvement. Will it ever get back to, you know, the, the way it was? No, but you will, you know, you, the, the improvement, you know, the improvement, whether, uh, you know, even if it's a small, is still an improvement. So focus on that. Benefits, this is the life, uh, the life gained. Uh, you know, I see if you're 55 to 64, you're going to gain about four years of life. 45 to 54, gain six. Uh, if you quit um, between the ages of 35 to uh, 44, you'll gain nine years. And then, of course, if you're young, the younger, the 25 to 34, gain about 10 years. So, um, and then again, this right here, you know, the earlier you quit, the more you'll be able to kind of, uh, you know, keep that identical rate to non-smokers. So working with certified tobacco treatment specialists, CTTS is for short. Uh, again, I mentioned we partner with your provider and you. Uh, we all use the, uh, the, the provider and, and the CTTS will use the most current evidence-based practice guidelines. Uh, they work with the patient to develop an individualized plan of care. Uh, we use motivational interviewing, counseling, 
planning. Care plan is then presented to the uh, provider for them to review, make any changes that they see necessary. But what's great is that uh, you, the uh, you know the the the, the smoker, you have a you have a stake in the process of building that care plan. So we build it that's right for you and what's most achievable for you because you know you best, and that's why we need you a part of it. Patients educated again on the neurobiology, kind of like what you just saw in the slide presentation. We go over this in, uh, you know, in detail again, and then we identify uh, personal strategies, set up personal goals, and uh, you know, our main goal though is to achieve freedom because that's what uh, that's the the main thing right there. We also want to as CTTS is we also follow up. So it's very much a a, a relationship based um, a model. It's uh, uh, you know we're with you um, until the end and even afterwards we're there even when you when you cease. Um, and uh, notice I said when and not if you are going to and uh, you know we'll we'll be there for. Uh, um, you know, be able to make any adjustments or anything like that and continue support. Basic concept, treat nicotine dependence for the serious medical problem that it is. And uh, we don't want to try and sugarcoat it or anything like that. It's bad for you. Really need to stay away from it. Motivational counseling plus uh, pharmacological therapies. This is the nicotine replacement therapy, or NRT for short, and our medications like Chantix, uh, Wellbutrin. Um, assess response to the counseling, proper use of these NRT therapies, combinations are better. So, you know, and the, the provider will be able to talk to you about that using the Wellbutrin and the nicotine patch for, for example. And then longer treatment is better. We really want to target for uh, best practices to target 12, a minimum of 12 weeks. So even, you know, so that's, that's just a kind of where we're at right now. Uh, I got a reference screen and uh, that is, uh, that is it here. Um, I want to thank you so much for uh, taking the time to uh, listen to this presentation. It'll be available for, uh, you know, any questions that you may have. And uh, thank you so much for your time. Stay healthy, stay safe, and uh, take care.